welcome to another Dreadlocks question and answer video where you ask the questions and I answer them. Or at least that is my plan. I intend to answer them, but how successful I will be, I do not yet know. We'll have to wait and see. Okay, the first question I've got is from Devin Renee, and Devin Renee asks, Question, my hair is super damaged from perming it, bleaching it, and dyeing it a ton. I really want dreadlocks, but I'm afraid that my hair will just break. What should I do? Okay, so there are kind of two options here. You can either wait for your hair to grow out and the new growth will be healthy and unbleach damage and all the rest and it will be stronger. Or you can dread the hair that you've already got. Now my thoughts are it's kind of worth just dreading the hair that you've already got. Worst case scenario, I mean the worst case possible would be that the hair would break, some of it would break. But if the alternative would be to wait for the hair to grow out and then cut off the damaged part anyway, I don't really see what the big deal is because that hair would be getting cut off. So if some of it breaks, well what? What's the loss really? I think in practice it's not all that likely to catastrophically break and fall apart. I haven't really seen a whole lot of that and I know a lot of people that bleach and dye their hair, dye their dreadlocks, make dreadlocks from damaged hair. I think it has to be super damaged before you're gonna have serious problems with it. What actually tends to happen is hair that is on the damaged side, that's dry and you know damaged, will actually knot up faster and easier than hair that is super soft and healthy. So my opinion would be to dread the hair that you've already got rather than wait for new hair to grow in. I think it's the best use of time. You could sit around and wait a year or two years to get whole new healthy new growth, but you could have instead dreaded the hair that you've already got, used that time for the dreadlocks to mature and also not lost length and stuff. And the new growth will grow in healthy and undamaged, but if you've already got dreadlocks going on, it will also grow in dreadlocked. Noah Mariscal asks, when you start your dreadlocks with six inches of hair, how long will your dreadlocks be if you use the back combing method? Everyone wants to know about shrinkage. Everyone wants to know how much hair are they going to lose? Because, you know, you spend time growing your hair out for dreadlocks. You want to know how much dreadlock you're actually going to get for that hair. And as always, for people that have seen me answer this question before, I cannot possibly say how much you're going to lose because it's different for every single person. Really it is. You will find people that say they've lost like no length. They have not noticed any shrinking really going on. The hair has stayed roughly the same length. Other people will seriously feel it and find that they've lost over half their length of hair. I will say that if you're starting out at six inches, you don't really have that much there to lose. People who notice the most shrinkage tend to be the people that have really long hair. Obviously, if you have more hair, there's more that you can lose, but percentage-wise, people with long hair seem to end up with losing the most percentage length. At six inches, you really don't have that much there to shrink up into. The dreadlocks will probably come out like four to five inches, and four to five inches from six, they're just kind of short dreads. It's not gonna be a massive transition, I wouldn't think, and especially with young dreads having loose hair, and there's loose hair sticking out, it's probably not gonna be that much of a noticeable length loss at six inches, really. So my guess would be around four to five inches. Rainy Pie, question. I'm sorry, I think you've already answered this, but I've only had my dreads for two weeks now, and I had much thinner hair than I realized, and there are only 18 dreadlocks. Do you think this will make it more likely just to clump up into one big knotted mess? Hair thickness is gonna have an effect on the dreadlocks, because if you've got thin hair, you've got less hair to go around so you'll either have fewer dreadlocks or thinner dreadlocks or fewer thinner dreadlocks when compared to someone with thick Er, hair. That's what's important there. Some people freak out and think I've got thin hair, I can't have dreadlocks, and then you have to just remember that it's only if compared to someone with thicker hair than you that you're gonna experience these differences. Having thinner hair is not gonna necessarily make you more predisposed to having your dreadlocks all clump up into one big mess. What is kind of involved is that if you have thin hair and you have thinner dreadlocks, then you do have to be kind of more on top of your separating because if you have thick hair and your dreadlocks are thicker, then they're stronger because there's more hair, so there's more to hold on to and pull. So when you do your separating and you have thick dreads, then you can generally get away with doing it quite easily because there's two thick, strong dreads and you pull them apart and the hairs that have started to congo between the binding hairs are few and therefore quite easy to break, but if you have thin hair and therefore your dreadlocks are thinner and weaker, you have to make sure you keep on top of the separating because otherwise you can find that those hairs that are doing the binding 
they can, you know, quite quickly, if you're not careful, end up becoming as strong as the thin dreadlocks themselves, at which point it becomes not so easy to separate them because the binding section can be as thick and as strong as the individual dreads and so they won't break first and it becomes complicated and then, yes, that can be a problem. But if you keep on top of it, as long as you're separating faster than they're knotting together, then it's fine. And since you only have 18 dreadlocks, that's kind of on the lower side of what is normal. I don't think it's important to dwell on how many dreadlocks you have. Some people worry and say, oh, he has more dreadlocks than me, she has more dreadlocks than me, why don't I have this number of dreadlocks? Everyone's gonna have a different number of dreadlocks. It's fine as long as you're happy with the way that they fill out your head. Doesn't matter. On the upside for you is that having 18 dreads means you only have 18 to separate, whereas if you had like 100 dreads, you'd have to spend like 10 times as long. Well, not 10 times as long, just over five times as long separating them all off. So you'll be fine as long as you keep on top of your separating. Jose Mendez asks, can I put baking soda in a sea salt spray? And what do you do during deep cleans? Um, no, you won't want to put bicarbonate in your sea salt spray. It's not going to do what you want it to do there. Bicarbonate is used in the deep clean, in the soak. You put it in the hot water, you put in your bicarbonate, you soak your hair in the bicarbonate water, you squeeze it through the dreadlocks, it squeezes out soap residue and other stuff. If you just put it in a sea salt spray, You'll spray it onto your hair, the water will evaporate and you just have dry bicarbonate on your hair. Make your hair dusty with bicarbonate and it won't clean it and you might find that it starts to irritate your scalp and stuff. So I wouldn't put bicarbonate in a spray. It's not gonna do the cleaning job that you would want it to do. And what do I do during deep cleans? Like what do I do to my hair or what do I do to pass the time? When I'm doing a deep clean, I have my head in the bucket and I will massage my scalp and I will do a lot of squeezing of the dreadlocks, squeezing the deep clean water in and out of the dreadlocks as much as I can, really. To pass the time, I listen to music or angle myself so I can watch TV while I do it. TV shows about 30 minutes long. I spend 30 minutes in the bucket. I can use that to uh, time how long I spend deep cleaning my hair. And the Facebook question this week is from Joseph Yaden. What is hard water? How do I know if I have hard water and how does it affect dreadlock progress? This is gonna be fun to answer. Okay, so the water that comes out of your tap, it's gone through quite a long journey between being rain in the sky and coming out of your tap. An example may be that it's rained down on a hillside somewhere, it's filtered down through rocks, it's gone into the water table, eventually it's come up through a spring, it's then been put into pipes and then it's been piped to your house, it comes out your shower head, you wash your hair with it. It can be a really long time between the rain coming out of the sky and the water coming out of your tap. The water filters through different rocks, it filters through minerals underground and it picks some of these up and it remains in the water. These are perfectly fine for drinking and stuff so they're not taken out and you probably know that you can go to the store and buy mineral water so it's not dangerous or anything. But where it's important with dreadlocks is that these minerals will reduce the effectiveness of soaps. If you live in a soft water area you get a little bit of soap, you mix it with water and it becomes all bubbly and nice. If you live in a hard water area you can find that it doesn't bubble up, it does not create a lather and it produces instead something called soap scum and this stuff is not as good for washing your hair and it will build up much faster inside your dreadlocks. It does not wash out as effectively and it does not clean your hair as well. It generally leads to you needing to use more soap to do the same amount of cleaning because the soap is less effective. So what this means for you and your dreadlocks is is that certain soaps that work great for other people, you can find reviews for dreadlock soaps that are like gleaming and people saying this soap is awesome, you take it home, you use it and you find that it just does not work with your hair very well, it doesn't wash out properly and it can be down to the water that you're rinsing it with. This is why it's very difficult to say which dreadlock shampoos are best because it can vary not only from what people's scalps need but also the water that they have when they use it. So what this means for dreadhead is it might might be more complicated to find a soap that is suitable. It can also mean that your soap leaves residue. Residue builds up a lot faster and you have to use more soap to effectively clean the hair and you know more soap means more stuff that can build up. And so the result of all this is that you may find that you have to do deep cleans a lot more often than someone who lives in a soft water area. You may find that a deep clean is required faster. You find that stuff is building up quicker and you need to keep 
deep playing away more frequently. Uh, how to find out if you're in a hard water area? I'm not really sure how you do a home test. I've tested in university for hard water. I've done experiments and investigations on hard water, but probably not practical to find out in your own house. You can just um, search online to find maps of hard and soft water areas, find out whether you're in an area that has a high mineral content in the water, etc. I mean, you can't change it, but it is sometimes good to know. I fortunately live in a soft water area. Lucky me, I've always lived here, so I have not really had a lot of experience with hard water, but obviously there are jet heads all around the world, so there are people living in hard water areas and soft water areas, and you just have to find stuff that works for you in your location. Those are my questions for this week. If you have a question that you would like to ask me to be answered in a Jetlet Q&A video, you can leave it down in the comment section below. Please write a question at the start of your comment and it will join the queue. If you like this video, if you found it helpful or useful, enjoyable, you can click the like button. If you'd like to see more videos from me in the future, you can click the subscribe button. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. I hope to see you again next time for the next Q&A video. Farewell!